<clears throat> I am, am. Hi, I'm Zoomless, and today is Saturday, which means it's time for a new live stream recording, which is what you're seeing right now if you're watching this on YouTube. Awesome. Um, today I have with me Mr. Fiji Ouija and Sean Law. Say hi, guys. Uh, do I go first? Hi. Sure. <laughs> you can go whenever. You can go. That was that was Fiji. I'm Fiji. He's Fiji. And I'm eating pizza. He's eating pizza. The bastard. Uh, I'm doing what I always do, smoking a fucking cigarette sitting here. Don't now, smoke, kids. No, smoke. no, smoking is bad. Smoking Don't smoke. Much the worst. I mean, it's smoking worst. anything is bad. Yes. yes. All right, smoking so uh, we didn't really have a huge plan for the show, except that we wanted to basically do a full-on Q&A. So let's have some chat questions for our guests and myself, if you care to ask questions about me, but mostly the guests, and we'll uh, do that. That's what we think we do. All right, so someone said that they like dick. That's not a question, but that's not really good. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are, we are waiting um, like a 23-second delay now, I think. Oh, yeah, that's right. The, the delay has been epic because... Freaking exploit and like Justin. It's, it's, been, yeah. it's been bad. It's been bad. Oh God, no! I don't smoke cigars. I, I can't stand the smell of cigars. All right. Um, still have been questions. One guy said talk base with a question mark. And how to Skrillex? How to Skrillex with exclamation points? So you're still not quite. Okay, someone asked a question for Feige, which was, why don't you make heavy stuff anymore? Um, well, uh, there's a plethora of reasons. Plethora of reasons. Um, it's, I feel like my talents are more suited towards uh, the, the more mellow stuff. But I am, a lot, with a lot of my unreleased work, uh, is, is patiently waiting on my computer in SoundCloud uh, is a lot has a lot more energy and is a lot dancier because I've been making a lot more deep house and things like that. But uh, the main reason is, um, I I kind of felt like I just had to pick one instead of constantly being an in between guy. So uh. somebody also asked, did you ever get rejected from Monster Cat? Oh yeah, really? A millions of times. Uh, there was a 11 month period where I didn't get any releases and wow. everything I made got rejected but I mean you just take those uh, those moments to grow and make yourself become a, a better producer and I mean look at me now I've I've had what I think four releases this year so I mean that's a, that's a good number yeah it's pretty good uh, seamless. Do you plan to do deeper stuff like true dubstep, deep DMB, and things like that? Um, I th I'm pretty sure I know what you mean by true dubstep, and the answer to that question is probably no, just because uh, it's not like it's not a thing I do, and I don't really. I, it's not like I don't like it because I do. I, I've had people give me dissertations on like what dubstep actually is and all that good stuff about the old school. And as far as like DNB goes, if I'm ever if I ever do a track that's DNB, it's usually going to be um, the kind of like noisy esque 2004 style hard DNB. Or I'm gonna try to do that and then end up doing something kind of similar, but not quite because I'm still not that good at it. It's kind of hard. Drumming bass is hard. Um, I used to want to be pendulum, but I never quite ever did that. So there's that. But like the the deep DNB kind of thing, I guess if you're considering it, if you're thinking like liquid. DB, I kind of view that as like DB light, <laughs> like is how I see that, and I, it's also kind of how I see true dubstep. But that's just because um, my introduction into EDM was mostly all about like super hard, heavy bass music, and that's all I ever want to do. So that's what I'm going to end up doing. Uh, what's the first thing? Okay, this is a question for Fiji. Uh, what is the first thing you do when you open FL and begin working on track? Uh, make a chord progression. Easy. Chord progression. Very good. He begins with the theory. <laughs> Same. How about you guys? 
I make a bass sound. So, I, I start, start with the intro. <laughs> he begins. He begins at the beginning, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. And then oh, yeah, I jump to the end. Uh, kind of non sequitur, and we're on air, so this is weird. I'm telling you this now, but I, at some point, send me a picture of the beginning of our remix, the the Black Sun Empire Noisy yeah, remix, because. Oh. I'm going to do a making up for that track, and since I don't have your project, I just want to have a picture of all your crazy cuts. So that we when can't I do a making of. What? We can't do a making of. No? Really? No. No. I'm sad. I mean, okay. <laughs> yeah. I suppose no, no. I should probably talk to them about that, but... Um, exactly. If I ever do a making of, I need a picture of that so that I can explain it. Yeah. Well, now you heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know things. And the fro has entered the chat. What's up, guys? Ladies and gentlemen, up, Prismatic is in the house. What's oh, up, guys? Oh, hi. Hi. Are you I Mr. I love your Green? hair. Yes, it's me. I love your I, hair. I love your music, dude. Oh, thanks. No, seriously. I listen to your shit all the time. I listen, <laughs> I listen to your new EP all the time, and I listen to Hysteria all the time. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah. Lot. Yeah, dude, especially, like, like seriously, like, like when I, because I make, like, you know, crazy rage music, but I listen to your stuff, and your stuff has, like, just the right of, it's, like, chill, but it has, like, just the right amount of energy, oh, so I can, still, I, I can st- still do high energy stuff, you know? I, I mean, that's, that's exactly what I, I try to do. I try to get just enough in there where it's, it's still possibly club- clubbable or live, oh, yeah. live worthy so i had a, i had a friend that i was playing a show with in um baltimore a few months ago and he was the opener and he played a couple of your tunes i think he played nebula and he i think he played hysteria too oh that's awesome i yeah i don't really get much many people like i i know people are playing my tunes but i never really hear about it as much as i pr- would like i probably should have warned you uh, that, that, that John was gonna fanboy on you. Oh. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, dude. I'm a big, I'm a big <laughs> fan. Fanboy so is good. And I've actually heard, first heard about you through um, Fractal because he's one, he's one of my best friends, and oh. um, he was like, "Dude, check out this awesome tune that this guy <laughs> named Mr. Fiji Ouija sent me," and we heard it, and it kind of reminded me of this artist that we like that from um, who lives in Virginia named Number Nine. Have you heard of him? No, I, I I I don't really listen to much music. To be yeah, honest. yeah, I, I hear you. I hear but, you. Um, well, no, I, I feel like uh, music listening to too much new music kind of stunts creativity. So I Holy feel like shit, I'm, dude! I like you a lot now. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, I can't tell if that's sarcasm or not, but no, thanks. I'm being serious. No, like I don't listen to I don't listen to EDM hardly at all. So every time I mean, somebody's like, "Have you heard this track?" I'm like, "No, I haven't." I, I listen to James Blake, Burial, and Uppermost. Oh, and, Uppermost is a shit. Oh, yes, he is. Um, but I mean, that's about that's. Those are like the, my three guys I, I listen to actively and in the EDM world. But that's I about it. I mean, if, if you can call some of that EDM. What do you look like without your glasses, Stephen? I look like me without my glasses. <laughs> you do kind of. You don't really sound like Batman anymore. No, no, I don't. My cold has subsided. And now my voice is more or less regular. Nice. Except unless unless it's the morning, and then I still Batman. I'm Batman in the mornings. Um, Where are they? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you so you're, here? So, so you're a you're a Harmer enthusiast. You're Batman. You have an epic beard. And uh, God, what can't you do, Stephen? Uh, brass instruments. Oh, oh I can oh, do brass instruments. I I I can't do that. No, it's by the trumpet. Play it's it. not a thing I can do. I mean, I, I get I get the basic theories, but I can't like the whole overtone series thing is not a thing that I'm good at. So it's uh not a thing I consider myself ability ability of. Those are words that I used just then. <laughs> someone, someone asked a question. Uh, have you ever tried to use Vocodex to distort actually, a bass? I actually just started using Vocodex when I got FL. I messed around with it a little bit. And, um, I mean, I know nothing absolutely. I almost know nothing almost. Uh, yeah. 
I know almost nothing about it, so you probably know far more than I do. Vocodex is pretty much the best vocoder that exists. That's not a hardware vocoder. Mm -hmm. Like, it's. I mean, there used to be competition. There used to be this plugin. I bring this all the time. Like, David Instruments had a plugin called v Vocator. Like, <laughs> and spelled with a K, obviously. And, like, it. It was in like 2002, this thing existed, and it had 1024 bands. Like, 1024. Vocodex has 100. Like, that's its max. And so, like, and this thing was being that crazy in 2002. And it had, like, you can, see, you can Google it. You can see, like, pictures of this crazy interface. And I have no idea what it sounded like. And it doesn't exist anymore. Like, they discontinued it. I, I don't know why. And then we, and they have, the, and, and I make the mouth, which is a vocoder. But it's, like, the most simplest and, like, can't even change it vocoder. Like, you can't really do much with it. But Vocodex is, like, it's amazing because you, cause you can change every aspect of it that does things. And you can do it by spectrum, like, per band changes. And it's just the best. But to answer the guy's actual question, um, I don't know quite what you mean by to, to distort a bass. Like, I've done, I've used it sometimes in an effort to add particular characteristics to it, but I wouldn't necessarily describe that as distortion. But um, basically, it'd be, you could do that if you turn off uh, the minimum time thing and then turn all the, all the attack and holds all whatever to zero. That'll, that'll distort quite nicely. Um, mm -hmm. A question for Fiji. Is Fiji in the stream? No, I'm not here. <laughs> Mr. Fiji Fiji is, is not in the house. He's, 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 <laughs> I'm just seeing some shit like I just keep seeing something about a mic vagina, a mic yeah. vagina, a mic yeah, vagina, yeah. and what, of course the occasional Sam. Where he's did this Sam. where did this inside joke come from? We we don't know. God. I was making faces at the stream while you guys were talking. And uh yeah. John, do you have a label? I don't have a label at all. Why are I people don't... asking if you can can you sign me you to your label? You... No. Please, John, sign me to your label. Oh any anything for you. Can totally. You'll be the you'll you'll be the you'll be the first one <laughs> on, my, okay. on my new All right. non-existent label. Okay, now let's take some viewer calls because we answered a bunch of chat calls, and I want to hear someone run through the auto tune that I have set up on the guy you, that talks next. I mean, so, we we answered chat questions. We did answer chat questions. I keep seeing that right not um, chat. Seamless, hurry up and take calls. I would like to give. I would. I would give my right nut to talk to Feej. He keeps it just keeps posting in the chat over and over again. Let's see, well, it's, has it been thirty seconds yet? Has the time elapsed? Because I'm never gonna get used to that. I mean, it's still not as bad as when I'm streaming on YouTube. It was like a two minute delay. Yeah, the delay has gotten gotten worse. Man, I, I got no calls, so either they don't know about it. Okay, now we got calls. This guy, he was the first dude. Ver Versio. Hello. Um, hi. I have some questions for Feej. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that auto tune. Auto -tune <laughs> what, what is your what? question, sir? Um, I have a couple. <laughs> uh, would you collab with Tolpa again? Um, how do you chop your vocals, and when are you going to release your Tristan EP? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I believe, I don't, I was told by Twitter that the Tristan, my, my EP, my Tristan EP is coming out on December 30th. Don't, don't quote me on that, please. But, I, I, cause I mean, we are the same person, but, um. Wait, 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 wait. you're Tristan? Yes. Yeah. We're all Tristan. We're all, yeah, we're all Tristan. I know. I actually know nothing about Tristan. I just see everyone talking about him all the time, and I'm just like, I've never really actually heard any music by him. I just hear his name oh, everywhere. You're missing out. He's he's very talented. Word. Can you can you, I, Oh wait, was it wait? What are we talking about again? What were the other two questions? No, other than the Tristan EP, the what was the first two questions? Uh, um, something about collabing with Tulip again. Um, I mean, we have uh, unreleased. How do you unreleased. chop vocals? Like, how, how do you chop, chop vocals? vocals? How do you chop? Oh, I see. That's the only thing I, I I don't know how to explain. Like when it comes to my production, I I it's really just intuition. You gotta 
uh, match the key uh, of the vocal samples that you're using. And you can do that. Um, actually, could you show that, uh, Steve? On, do you mind me calling you Steve? Is that cool? Are we yes, cool? Yes, that is my name. My name is Steve. Uh, okay. okay um, do a how, how you can change the uh, the pitch of a sample True. Uh, by set via semitones. Fake me. <laughs> I thought that was the kid talking again. <laughs> oh, that just that just hurts. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so. Um, in NFL, uh, when you have a sample, you can change pitch a number of ways. Um, the I, th I suppose the most non-destructive way would be to set your your time stretching. Because here's the th here's the thing about pitch pitch shifting, and in FL is that um, pitch shifting is a form of time stretching, because pitch is a function of speed at which you're playing a sample. So if you play a sample slower, it, it lowers the pitch. Play it faster, and it <coughs> raises the pitch. So, um, raising the pitch without changing the time is a form of time stretching. So, uh, that's why it has to do with time stretching that we're doing this. But, um, <laughs> I, the, uh, I use pro default just cause it's default. It's just there. And then, uh, you get the pitch wheel and you get, you know, sense and sem and like that pretty much sense and a hundred cents equals a semitone. So, um, yeah, you, you gotta know what key you're in and like, say for example, uh, this one is, I don't know what the hell, Come on. I, don't know, I don't know what the hell key that's in, but if it, like, if it was in C, um, and I wanted it to be in G, then I would know that I need to move it, uh, seven semitones, mm -hmm. because seven, seven semitones is a fifth, and the G yep. is a fifth of C, so that's one, and then you do that, and then it will sound weird, because it does that. But um, there's ways to do that and make it not sound weird in FL. Um, you can, I can if you have you new tone, if you have new tone, you can uh, uh, raise and lower the pitch, and it's pretty good about keeping the formants in, in time. But if you don't have new tone, you can actually do this in Edison, because Edison's time stretching um, business actually has a formant option built in for particular uh, types. I have I don't do this very often, so where is it? this guy? Yeah, so that's the normal. Okay, so. If you right click it, you get different options, and if you click it, you get the time stretcher. And in here, we get pitch and all this good stuff. And if you have pro default engaged, you also get formant preservation, which uh, by default doesn't do anything. But um, the factor is based in semitones. So like, if I wanted to uh, pitch it up to um, pitch it up to the G that we're talking about, we want to add seven semitones. And then if I went to the factor and did minus seven semitones, so we're increasing the pitch by seven semitones, but the formants are being moved down seven semitones. That sounds horrible. Wow. Good God. Um, Jesus. What are you doing to that poor lady? I believe I did this incorrectly. Let's do... Come on. That kind of works That's better. I did it good. It's a little... It's a little wishy-washy you could say that but um new tone does a much better job i do it um, completely different than that <laughs> for all chopping <laughs> even that 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 what you're talking about sending you that picture of the the intro to the noisia one yeah the bsc and noisia i actually just put everything on pro transient and then i stretch and pitch appropriately and then i run it through melodyne there you go that works too um you do the chopping ahead of time and then you uh, are auto to it basically yeah I just I just flip the sample to pro transient and and then I adjust pitch and time there and then I go in to Melodyne after I've done all the chopping sequence and do it from there yeah so you, you if can do that in new tone key. if you had that new tone is basically FL's Melodyne although it's not as feature complete as Melodyne Melodyne's kind of overrated to be honest with you I mean it's it's cool to use for basic stuff, but I would never use it for anything really advanced. Yeah, I mean, how often do you really ever need to auto-tune chords? Yeah, I, I, unless it's stems, and I, I don't ever use it anyways. Hmm. Well, I did do it on a track that I did vocals on once, but that was because I thought my vocals sounded like shit. Yeah, I do that too. Um, I hope that answered your questions. Yeah, thank you. Awesome, <laughs> thanks for your call. 
See what? ya. Bye bye. Bye bye. Love you. By the way, when you do call in to be a caller, make sure you mute the stream so that uh, it does there's not problems on your end. It oh yeah, really your actually... title's gone. It is? Is it? Yeah, the little title's not up there where they can call to. Okay, there it is. That's the one thing I really dislike about FL is that when you open it, all the plugins that are used in that session are just like BAM. Oh you can right change that. You. Yeah, if you really had yeah, if you just you hold escape that? and you close them all and then you save it like that, they don't all open up like that. Yep. Okay. Oh, I I just learned something there. I don't really mind that, to be honest. I do. When you I'm open so one used to it that I don't even notice anymore. Yeah, ex exactly. <laughs> when you open one of Steven's projects, it's like a fucking disaster. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Steven was, when I first met him, he was like, yeah, I don't know what organization is. Yeah, I just remember someone asking me on my Facebook, how do you, how do you organize your samples? And I'm like, I organize my samples by I don't organize my samples. <laughs> yeah. That's, see, because like FL, like... Brian, the BT, is constantly extolling how FL is like a, a giant modular synth, and he's not wrong because like there's a thousand different ways to get to any individual thing, and like and it could be a huge pain in the ass if you're used to one particular kind of workflow, and then you go like you know open one of my projects, and there's no there's no flow. It doesn't appear to make any sense at all, and it's just because like if I wanted to go to like a harmer that's in a pattern, you know I I could I could like put the pattern down. It's it's down and then I'm like, okay I want to go there I double click on the pattern and then I'm I'm, I'm where I'm, I need to be but if I tried to find that harmer in the list in the sequencer I would never find it because there's like sixty other harmers and they're all called harmer because I don't name anything uh -huh. so like that's but that, that's how I can survive is because FL just has a thousand ways to do anything <laughs> all right let's do more callers calls. And in the meantime, oh, Fiji, do you tune your kick and snare? Um, if it needs to be tuned, yes. If it doesn't, no. I mean... Under what conditions would, would you need to tune your kick and snare? If you're... Uh, if it's an 808. If it's an 808. I would tune it. So it doesn't mess with my sub bass. That's a good, that's a good plan. Um, I tune the kick and the snares, like, if I have... If I layer them with other kicks and snares... Mostly just snares, um, just so that the fundamentals line up. Because if they don't, the uh, the attack can be diffused. Let's have this guy. Whoa, stop. Okay. Okay, this dude's name is Admiral Swiggins, so we're answering a call. Swiggy, what's up? Hello. Oh. Can you hear me? Yeah. Swiggy, you there? Admiral. Oh, hey. Hi. Pray for Squiggy. <laughs> what is what is your question? Uh, I was wondering what you guys look to for inspiration. <laughs> if it's like, uh, <laughs> I can hear the auto tune and the delay. It's weird. Whatever. Uh, Let's so cry. What do you guys look to for inspiration? Like images, other music, stuff like that. Okay, um, Mr. Veej. Okay. Um, I mean, really, just whatever is happening in my life really is what I I take inspiration from. It's I really think that uh, like my songs, whether it be a, a mesh of one idea of you know a, a collective of different things happening in my life, were just uh, one thing. It, it, it that's really what it is for me. Um, uh, that's what inspires, and also just other people's music. It really inspires me. Um, what about you guys? Go, John, well, go. for me, for me, um, I would say similar to you. I, I do get inspired by other people's music, but I, when I hear other people's music, it's just like um, it, it sort of helps me. I, like I have this idea, but it's like a really, it's really abstract and it's not very focused. And I hear like what other people do, and it's sort of. It's like it's like having teachers, you know. Like I've learned a lot about making music just by listening to other people's music, and especially with other techniques. And um, usually, like when I listen to stuff, I, you know, just stuff like for that purpose. I I tend to study it and not really use it for listening. Like I kind of have music that I listen to, that I list, you know, have for just listening purposes. And also, um, much like what Mr. Fiji Weed you said, can I can I just call you Sean? No, 
His sure. name's not Sean. Uh, my name's my name's <laughs> Mr. Mr. Toodle. Uh, sure, you can call me. No, t- just call me Beach, please. Beach. <laughs> or Beach or Brendan. My first name's Brendan. Oh, okay, cool. I'll call I'll call you Brendan. But um, like what Brendan was saying, um, whatever is currently happening, you know, in your life, like what you're currently feeling, and um, also another thing that kind of helps inspire me is uh, I, I is is kind of deadlines. <laughs> I like to set deadlines for my self and sometimes I have them imposed by labels and I don't know I just enjoy like working quickly and working fast and just kind of not really thinking too much about what I'm doing and just do it and then after I do it go back and tweak it but yeah that's that's kind of what gets me inspired uh I don't take inspiration from anybody's music no classical music maybe Mm. I get inspired by movies like oh yeah I go to it's like if I go to especially any kind of like blockbuster or triple A action movie because like not necessarily if the movie itself was good but because the score is usually awesome, and I mean that literally as an inspiring awe. Like things in, about it are like usually just like over the top epic and it's just like really cool. And I'm always just like shit. I want to be here watching this. I want to go do stuff. And then I go home and it's already gone. But most of the time, if I can remember it, um, that's something that's there. And like I'm always. Like 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 John Prismatic was saying about about listening to things, but like studying them, that's kind of what I do. Like if I I I can't not listen to a track and not be analyzing it. Like, yeah, it's it's kind of a it's kind of a drawback from li- actually listening to it, enjoying it. But it's just sort of what it's. You just sort of program your brain to just like you know see it as an arrangement. Yeah, kind of. What's kind of interesting is that. There are some songs that I listen to that I have been listening to since long before I ever started producing music. And like those those music like those songs I can still listen to and not analyze them. And that's just because I'm used to not analyzing them. Like I've they're already they've already been like internalized as like recreational music to me. But like anything new that I get, I'm always like, hmm, how how did they do this? How do I do that? How can I make it better? Kind of thing. <laughs> and like yep. I take it's like I take I'm, like, hugely, like, I don't really seem like it, you know, like, the kind of person who would be, but, like, I, I, I get jealous. Like, I'm a very jealous individual, and if I hear, I, I, if I hear a track I that does something... Are, I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> like, I, I hear a track that does something that I can't immediately figure out, I get mad. Like, I'm yeah. like, I must know! I must know! And it's, like, why <laughs> I know anything that I know, because I, I heard a thing, I'm just like, I need to, I need to do it, I need to figure this out. And then, like, these days... These days, if I if I run into something that I can't figure out, I just like I I just like I can't. I feel sad because like I do all these tutorials, <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'm like the person that people look to to know how to do this stuff, and I don't know how to do this one thing, which I have been running into a lot of, in doing the sound design request tutorials because, um, I basically resigned to not ever nailing them, and getting kind of close, especially when someone's like, oh, do this feed me bass. I'm like, you asshole. <laughs> Like, I, now I have a question for you, Steve. What? Uh, what? What inspired you to start making music? Was it curiosity, as well? It was like a weird foregone conclusion for me. Like I don't even know. I um my 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 family is hugely musical. Like my dad is a jazz drummer, and his whole whole side of his family was basically in a band like their whole their whole lives. And uh, my parents put me in the piano when I was younger, and I hated it every minute of it. And um, <laughs> that's and, how I was when I was younger. Yeah, and like I kept at that for like eleven years, to the point where, like, I I still hated it, but I still viewed music as like my hobby. So when I had an option to do A or B or C, I picked the one that had the most relevance to music because that's what I knew. That's what I had like internalized as a person. And so like I I went to high school and there's like oh there's an electronic music course and I took it. And I'm like, oh, now I do that. Now, now this is the thing I do. And then, like a couple of years later, oh, hey, I'm actually kind of having fun with this. And then a few more years later, we're here. We're now. That's now. And like, I I can't like. It's not like I want to grow up and be a producer. It's just the thing that just happened, and mm-hmm. I can't see that not <laughs> happening. Like that's just how my life rolls. Interesting. All right. Well, thanks for answering my question. Have a nice day. You too. You too. Bye bye. Love you. Bye. Love you too. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that got awkward. 
I know. That felt, I, I, that felt, he's that very right. affectionate. <laughs> yeah. right, let's do let's do more let's do more chat chat questions. Uh, I mean, I mean, I've just been watching the chat. <clears throat> see, uh, holy balls! What did I just see? And there's a gif. Seamless, are you Beatport top ten? Oh yeah, Seamless is the hottest big room producer right now. <laughs> Hold on, I want to see if this if this if this gets on the chat. It does. Ah! Okay, what? the stream is gonna see this gif, and now it's been recorded forever. What gif? What gif? Let me see. Let me see. Is It'll it a funny Seamless gif? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> okay, that's, whoever made that. That's funny as shit. Is is good at what they do. Someone is, is dude. There's like a seamless fucking a Steven fucking like fan. Like you, you have a really big fan somewhere. <laughs> I have very technologically proficient fans. Yeah, for sure. Oh, Someone man. said seamless. Do you savant bases? <laughs> what does he mean by that? Do you do savant bases, or are you a savant of bases? I don't think that was a question. I think that was a command. I think he said seamless. Do savant bases. But like with savant base, the thing about savant sound design is that like his sound design is awesome, but it's it's very like it's all sort of subconscious. Like nothing is really like in your face. You know what I mean? It's all kind of flashing before your eyes. Yeah, like um, I, I listened to a whole bunch of savant stuff like, like a lot, like all at once a while ago, and I noticed that like I, there wasn't really like a, a central. A central sort of style that I could grab onto and be like, "That's a that's a savant. That's his thing. That's the thing he does." And like, because I mean, a lot a lot of his songs didn't really tickle my fancy in terms of like sound design, but some of them did. Like so, yeah. every every once in a while, some of them would be like the most epic of raging ragers ever, and they have oh, like yeah. the, the coolest bases known. And then the next one would be like a chip tune. And yeah, yeah, that's like the only thing that really like is consistent throughout his music is that like half pulse square melody that he always uses. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I could definitely you can definitely find like a sort of video gamey influence in everything that he does, but <clears throat> yeah. that's a very wide kind of thing to apply to something. Didn't he just do like a mobile video game or something? Oh, well, yeah, it was called Ascent. It's yeah. like a two D side scroller thing. I actually made yeah. a video of me playing it. Seamless plays games. Actually, I put that on my main channel because it was a savant game. I felt it was relevant to be on the on the music channel. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Feige, so, why did you remix Justin Bieber or Fifty Cent? Because it was oh, smart. <laughs> because I I love the challenge of. Uh, you know, I, I listen to things on the radio all the time, and it, you know, there's a lot of production that goes on that I I disagree with. That I'm like, oh, it it that shouldn't have happened. Why is this on the radio? So when I get to remix, you know, a big top forty song like that, it, it's kind of like my opportunity to put out there uh, what I would have done if I was a producer on that track, and I think that's that's a lot of fun. That's. That's pretty. That's pretty cool. I have a question for you, um, Brendan. So, have you? I know in your music you don't really do like you know heavy bass like drop music, you know, like dubstep and things like that. Have you ever like? Have you ever um, tried to do something like that? Oh yeah, no, I I, I started out doing that, but I want I want to hear some of it. I bet it's all. Oh it's no, no 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 no! You <laughs> you don't. Please, um, <laughs> just maybe one, just one. No, I mean I mean. I can link you like after the show, but there's there's stuff out there. I'm sure you can find it's, um, it's not really my, like my forte. Like it's it, it, the stuff that I do. It's decent, but it's not. Uh, I really don't think it's anything noteworthy. Uh, I mean, I, and I have the capacity, I believe, to to do stuff that is no, noteworthy. But and I'm sure I'll, I'll learn more things as I, I continue producing because producing's always yeah, it's. Yeah, it's a journey. You're always learning things. Otherwise, you're gonna become stagnant. Be stagnant. But well, I I just I don't know. I just think my my talents are more uh, yeah, predisposed sure. to making something ambient because I mean when I first started off, I I was doing 
you know, I was always doing something ambient and I didn't really know that was, uh, I mean, until I found, uh, Mr. Suicide Sheep's channel, I didn't really know that a lot of, that people actually had a, an appreciation for the, the more mellow stuff. And that's why when I found his channel years ago, that was a, a big thing for me. It's like, oh, wow, there's all this, this, uh, music out there like this. And it, it really pushed me into making what I really wanted to make. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. You found that and that you knew you could mm -hmm. sustainably. Someone says somebody sounds like Fractal. Who sounds like Fractal? Do I do I sound like Fractal? I don't really think I do. Are we talking about like our voices sound like Fractal or like? Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I've never I guess, Fractal. I guess Fiji kind of sounds like Fractal. Oh. No, <laughs> not, not at all. Like it's. It's more of an inflection thing, not so much of actual voice tone. I mean, I don't think anyone here actually really sounds like Fractal, but that's if that if if someone did, that would be my my bet. Dude, Tristam. So wait, so did you start the Tristam project, or are people just saying that just to <laughs> say it? Um, are people just saying that just to it, say it's it? It's a joke. Um, since. Since uh, Tristam's Monster Cat's baby, uh, a, a big thing in like the comments on their videos would be like, "When's the next Tristam song? Where's Tristam?" And like, not even relevant to the video. So I, I just kind of you know started this thing one day on Twitter. I changed my my picture to uh, his profile picture, and and I changed my name to Tristam and matched his description. And of course, I have the my my Twitter's verified. So that even <laughs> made it a bit funnier. Doesn't, um, but he, doesn't he have like a thing going on where like he never like shows his real face or whatever? No, no, he no, he's shown his real face before. He's done streams and stuff. He's just he's way more low key. He's he's more withdrawn, and I don't know if that's more because management pushed him that way, or if it's because he doesn't know how to. I mean, I wouldn't know how to deal with. With all those fan, like his fans or stuff like that, or if it's just he prefers it that way. There's what's also a, what's a really fucking awesome Tristan song, like because I know he does a lot of collabs with like you know Pegboard Nerds and whatever. Like uh, what's my a, favorite by him is I Remember. I think that's a really good one. Uh, one About track to, I listened to his of his recently was uh, Hawkling Street because. Uh, oh, that's an old wanted, one. What? That's an old one. Yeah, someone someone was wanted a sound design made. request. And I listened to it, and like it had, it's a pretty dope sound design. Like, it was good. What's this called? Hawkling. Hawkling Hawk Street. How do you spell that? Like Hawk, I guess. And then Ling, like Zergling. Only Hawkling. <laughs> and then Street. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, yeah, let's have some questions. Seamless. Who was Master Troller? Okay. I actually thought I knew who that was because a friend of mine texted me and made fun of what the person said. And I thought that that was like them being all like, haha, I'm the troller. And um, the name Master Troller kind of seemed like something that that said friend would have named themselves if they wanted to come on to be an obvious troll. Uh, but that turned out not to be the person. So, um, I've heard this I Remember song. I'm listening to it or right now, and I think I've heard it before. The truth. The da 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 da. <laughs> I've heard that a lot. I didn't actually. I don't think I've heard the rest of the song, but I've heard that a lot. All right, let's have a, let's have a caller. Let's let's do some calls. There's already someone calling for some reason. Um, let's take his call because we're doing that now. Uh, he hung up. Wait, no, he's calling again. Hello, Josh. Oh, hello. How are you? I'm good. How about you? Pretty all right. You got a question for us? Uh, yeah, actually, I have a question for PG. Oh, God. Um, so I feel right, bad because um, everyone's asking me the questions. That's why oh, you're yeah, here. You're guy. <laughs> At least in my eyes. All right. Um, so were you ever in band or are you still in band or anything? Or like, did you play any instruments uh, like before you started okay. working on electronic music? Okay. Yeah, I can answer that question. Uh, was it fourth grade? I started playing the trumpet and for my school band, and that lasted about uh, I think I stopped eighth grade. So, you know, 
Yeah, I think that was. I, I, I don't know. I definitely think four, that uh, four or five years. Being a band. Um, I but I also. I, I remember when I when I quit, I, I kind of quit because I just I didn't fit in with the crowd and it, it just didn't really entertain me playing one <laughs> instrument because uh, I just started I, in my last year. I really just. I started, uh, you know, composition with music production, and you're in charge of everything, and you really see the entire scope of the song, which I, which I prefer. And I also taught myself guitar from the ages of 10 to 14, but I, I, I dropped that once I got more serious into electronic music. And um, I mean, that, that's just my background. What about you guys, nice. Sean? Sean, um, Are you there, Sean? I'm Sean. <laughs> Sean's not here. Okay, okay well, not, go ahead. Okay, so my little my background is that so much like Stephen, when I was in kindergarten, my I took piano lessons, um, and partially because of my parents, and I was like, hey, why not? And I I hated it. I thought it was terrible. I hated all the really simple like folky kid songs they made. They taught you all oh, the God, major yeah. scale Jesus. music. It was just fucking terrible, and I. But I still did it because, like, my parents wanted me to, and I wanted to make them happy. And I sort of knew it was good for me to do, so I just kind of did it. Like, I half-assed it, and I and I got like okay. I think the most complicated piece I played when I was younger was that song, "The Entertainer." The did it, did it, did it, did it. <laughs> that was like the yeah. most complicated one. And then in like middle school, I was like, "All right, I really don't want to do this anymore. I I I don't want to play piano anymore." So I stopped doing it. And, you know, I kind of just got into, throughout the, this time period, though, I wasn't particularly into music. Like, when I was playing piano, I didn't really understand, like, popular music. Like, I didn't understand rock music when I was a kid. I thought, it was like, why do I want to listen to these distorted guitars and people screaming? Like, I, why, why, I didn't get it. And that, it wasn't until middle school that I heard System of a Down. I was like, oh, yeah. wow, okay, this is, this yeah. is tight. I like this. And nice. Um, and it was produced well, too. So, Or at least I think it's produced well. And um, mm -hmm. I also like the Gorillas a lot, too. That kind of inspired me as well. I'd say those are my two big, like, main influences for, like... I mean, it, long story short, I ended up in electronic music, like, way later down the line. I actually didn't really like electronic music until I heard Justice and Aphex Twin and really early Bass Nectar, like, 2009 Bass Nectar, Um I, I honestly was turned off by electronic music. Like I hated trance music. I hated it, and I hated I hated hard style. I hated I hated anything above 140 BPM that was electronic. I was like, I don't like this at all. I was like, it just felt cheesy and like robotic and lifeless. And like I said, it wasn't until I heard some like heavy slow bass music, like Justice or like or even some crazy intricate like drum and bass like Apex Twin that I was, like, really starting to get into it. And then I heard um, Chasing Shadows do uh, a dubstep, like a hardcore dubstep song, their song Ill, I think it was called. And that shit, I heard it on a really big sound system with really heavy bass, and I was like, this is my favorite music of all time. I want to do that. I want to be a part of this. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of how I got involved with music. I mean... There's way more to it, you know, like there's, for a while I wanted to get into playing bass because I love the band Primus and I was kind of, <laughs> my thing though is that, so I had the piano lesson, I had the piano background kind of, even though I half-assed it, it actually was Fractal because me and Fractal, we, you know, we live in the same town, like he lives down the street from me and I've known him since high school and we became really good friends and like he, I, he pretty much taught me like how to produce, like he gave me, he's the one that allowed me to get my foundation going. And he also taught me quite a bit about music theory, too. So I, I owe a lot to him in helping me, you know, get going. Nice. nice. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. definitely. Um, um, yeah. So that's my uh, story. Um, either of you two, um, have you guys been taking, like, any music theory classes or, or are you guys all self-taught completely? I know you were talking about your piano lessons and everything, but, like, since you guys stopped doing that, have you – all been working on it by yourself or is there some other person that has been helping you learn along the way uh i just i took a, a half, i'm actually taking a half year so a one semester uh music theory class uh at my high school and okay. to be honest i i i don't really like it because it's just it's just like 
putting fancy Italian names on uh, <laughs> a lot of ideas that I've already just kind of picked up on my own. But at the same time, it it it's let me expand my knowledge. But I'm also I don't know. I don't want to get too deep into theory myself because I'm I, or just something like that because I feel like that might limit my creativity. But yeah, exactly. But I, I feel like um, just having the brains is most of it. Like being able to be creative, well, not, not necessarily. necessarily I, I like kind of need that basic a little bit, like a little bit. Yeah. Even if you don't know what to call what you think you're doing, you're still gonna exactly. end up doing it anyway. Like mm -hmm. uh, before, like 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 he's like he like he was doing. Um, I took. I actually went to college for music for like a year before I dropped out and decided to do it, do it on my own. But um, during that year, uh, the, the music theory classes were part of it. And uh, it seems like theory, when they teach you theory at like a like a professional educational level, they teach you classic classical theory. Mm -hmm. And like most, you know, the theory is all derived from the terms that are from that, so that's, that's sensible. But like. It's the most like restricting universe you've ever ever seen, like mm -hmm. classical music, classical theory. It's like, it's robotic at this point. It's very, like everything about it has been charted. <laughs> and <Yeah>. um, <laughs> when I went to go, when I went to do it though, I started at the lowest level because I didn't test at, out of it because I I didn't know how to name all the minor scales like by by the 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 signature their key I, signature the key yeah. signature I couldn't name them all. I couldn't write them all. I, I didn't know any of them. I didn't even know major scales. But, um, like, I still knew what a minor scale was, but not because someone had taught me, but because I figured it out over, at that point, like, four, four or five years worth of dicking around with FL Studio. Like, mm -hmm. which is not, the, like, I'm not saying don't, I'm not saying you to do that because that's unbelievably slow. Like, to take that many years to get to that level. I thought, like I wasn't really trying to. I just kind of like happened upon it. But like if you want to learn how to how to like write the stuff that's in your head because that's really what people think about when they think about the when they want to learn theory because they want to be able to translate what they're hearing in their head to be able to write it down or to translate what they hear some other songs doing. Like they hear a cool riff or a cool melody and they're like, "Oh, I want to know what that was. I want to be able to, to write that." And knowing theory helps you better articulate that that whole language that whole universe of stuff and yeah. that's more or less the point of it all right and i got one last thing um whenever you, you guys do live shows right uh i do from time i do like once a month i do a live show all right well when you do do you guys um like you use midi controllers and actually play live or do you just um like click the play button and then like change some knobs and change things up a bit and like use uh a turntable or whatever well, yeah, whenever I, I play live, I DJ my music. I, I play an all-original set, usually. Um, I, I Like I said, I DJ because I, there's no possible way I can play my music out live. Yeah. There's too many, too many automations, too many like audio, yeah. just too much shit happening at one time. So, I just yeah, I use a MIDI controller. I use Ableton to DJ live. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I have all my audio clips in there, and you just... You know, you, you hit play and, like, you can choose to trigger different parts of songs if you want to, yeah. you know, get fancier. But for the most part, I just hit, hit a song. And then, you know, I, I usually let, like, half of – I play, like, half of the song. Like, so, like, the first drop after that, when the bridge happens, I, you know, beat match it into another song and fade it out. And you usually mm -hmm. want to stick to songs that are in similar tempos and that go up in tempo you know what i mean so like yeah say you're playing like a 110 song you usually might want to go to like a 128 song or like in that range you usually don't want to do huge tempo jumps so you don't want to go from like 110 to like you know um to like you don't want to do like 110 to like dubstep or whatever or like 110 to like drum and bass or whatever <laughs> I mean, yeah, you can you can yeah, kind of do that because that goes down. But yeah, you kind of want to stick around the same tempo. And yeah, I just it's it's easier to DJ your music live. And the reason why I ask this is because I'm in indoor drumline. That's how I got into music. Is I'm in band and I'm in drumline. And um, uh, for our show this year, I'm going to be playing live dubstep on a launch pad. And so I was just okay. wondering if you guys knew anything about that. Okay, I got, I got sweet. Pete, seamless does. I got a thing. I got a thing. I can tell you about that. So I did. I don't I, I don't I don't at present play live shows, but um, I 
at one point I got I got like the the second I got a launch pad, the first thing I tried doing was um learning my track bass antics on like making it making oh, a yeah. layout and then playing it. And the way that I see the launch pad working it is basically two schools of thought about playing the launch pad. There's like uh there's the triggered way, which is like you have an a like an Ableton setup and then you play like scenes and different parts but you're playing it, and then you're basically telling it to play it at the next beat or the next bar or whatever. Kind of like um, if you watched Matt Maddian's uh, pop pop culture, yeah, pop culture mashup. Oh, um, yeah, I'm just sick. You can kind of it's it's a really awesome set, and you can kind of see that like he's hit, he's hitting it like kind of just before the beat, like a little bit, because he's triggering it ahead of time, right? So that's yeah. that's a very complicated version of that. You can be way less intense and still basically be doing that. And then there's the other the other school of thought, which I call play all the things, which is along the lines of like M4 Sonic. If you ever saw his yeah. weapon video, yeah, and where everything you're hearing, he is responsible for creating at that time. Like he's mm -hmm. like his fingers are pushing the thing that makes that sound, and that's what yeah. I elected to go with to do the bass antics thing because um, at the time, uh, FL FL's performance mode was new. I didn't really, I didn't, I didn't have it all figured out, so I decided, well, I'll just do it all manually, and it was really fucking hard. Like, oh yeah, I did it once. It took like I, it took me like a week of like hardcore intense practicing to get it right, and I took like sixty takes on the day of actually recording it. I didn't even get it perfect. It was just it was the worst, and like yeah. everyone who's a, who's a, like actual professional, like in playing out has told me that that's a, it's a dumb idea to do that and to think that you can have a set of that live. Because you can. Yeah. Like, you can make that your life and, like, be really good at it. It'd be really impressive. Like, because if you look at M4 Sonic stuff, it's not really that complicated. And it's, no. it's, for, it's for good reason. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you, you can't be that complicated, otherwise you'd die playing it. Like, if I had to mm -hmm. play an hour of the, what I ended up doing with bass antics, it would be, it'd be insane. Like, it helps that I have, you know, I was brought up on the piano, so I have the finger dexterity to kind of deal with that. And rhythm is important, too. And as you said, you're a, a line drummer for a marching band. Yeah. So that should be, like, right up your alley. Like, you would have no problem, like, acclimating yeah. this sort of thing. So, like, my my kind of suggestion would be to do, like, a kind of a, a middle round where, I mean, this is actually kind of what uh, the Image Line guys suggested to me because no one can play... My base antics layout, which is in FL, by the way, it's in it's in yeah. FL Eleven's project files, um, and be, you, you can like automate some things. You can like push push the button and have it do some things, and then you can have yourself playing live some other things. So like you're kind of involved, but the song's not going to screw up if you do, which is what happens when I screw up. When my I'm playing my thing because I have total control over everything, which is, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. For tempo. Yeah. All right. Well, I gotta go. Um, I'm about to go to a party. So. Awesome party hard. Party. All right. Yeah. All right. See you guys later. Hopefully, Bye. maybe. All right. See you. Seamless. Let your hair down. Oh god. <laughs> uh, okay. It's actually kind of dirty, but we'll deal with it, I guess. Ah. Lots of hair. Lots and lots of hair. Congratulations. You have seen my hair. <laughs> It's like you immediately die. hotter. You die now. I don't mean like it's hot. I mean like it's actually warmer now. Um, all right, let's ask some chat questions. Uh, what is a good way to train your ear to tell whether something is well produced or not? That's In experience. Yeah. Yeah, experience, and um, I mean, you, I, I can tell when something's over compressed, and usually that's bad because really? it sounds, you know, squash, and it creates all those nasty little artifacts from being over compressed but I mean that's something you kind of have to get you you gain that knowledge over time because you've you know put a limiter on everything and <laughs> you know so I mean that just comes from experience like listen to stuff that you think sounds good and then like that's your bar and the bar changes because mm -hmm. every once in a while you hear a track that kind of blows you away or does something differently and see here, here's something interesting about about memory is that you'll remember things being better than they are if you liked them. Like, this is the nostalgia factor, but it also works for this sort of stuff. Because, like, um, a good example would be... Well, we were talking about System of a Down earlier. earlier. And uh, yeah. their first album was really good. 
It's, it's like my personally my, my favorite of everything they've ever done. Was Wh- which one? The first one. Just oh, um, down, just self-titled. self-titled. Yeah. And like yeah. my memory of those songs is so huge. Like it just sounds in my mind amazing. And then if I were to go listen to it, because like, I've had this happen, if I if I if I went to go listen to the t- the actual tracks after years of not listening to them, and like it's a, it's a bit of a shock because like um, they, I mean, it's well produced for what they used to do to make it, but it's not like it's not like the best production possible in the universe. But like I thought it was at the time, and like my memory made it as such. As I listened to newer things, like I went on, I went on to listen to like you know modern corn recordings. Or like Meshuggah or Periphery, like the really bleeding edge of like metal recording and production, and then I go back and I listen to System of a Down, and my my brain is like calibrated my memory of what System of a Down sounds like to be through the filter of what I think modern production is, and so like See, it gets weird. It's it's funny in regards to electronic music. I used to think Skrillex in 2010 was like the best produced electronic music I'd ever heard. I was like, this this is phenomenal production. I'm like, the, the drums sound awesome. You know, the basses are fat. Everything hits. And, you know, I look back at it now, and I'm like, wow, Skrillex stuff does not sound that good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, sounds like, very, it, it sounds very 2D. It's, 2D. it's very um, over. It's, it's a very over-compressed, and it's not EQ'd very well at all. Yeah, I, would, I wouldn't say that. I... I I respect his production quality and I mean I love Skrillex. That's, like, that's I love his That's the key word music. there is it's, respect it. Like you you know that it's like it's kind of like it's oh, kind of like there's things I would do differently, but it's I mean what he's doing is it works and it's 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 who, who am I to say that it, my stuff is is better produced? I mean it, obviously I don't I don't think it is, but I mean he has what 10 20 years of experience on me. I I don't know, and I just I I don't hear exactly what you're saying unless you're talking about his old old stuff. I'm I'm, I'm talking about like old like 2000 like like slats 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 and and uh, yes. my name is Skrillex EP. Or are you talking about like I'm, scary I'm, monsters? I'm talking about scary monsters. Is I'm talking about the yeah the scary monsters like in for the kill and like uh, hey sexy lady like those songs. Uh, in for the kill. I listened to that like last week, and it is a lot flatter than I remember it being. But the drums I mean, still sound amazing in there. Uh, th- well, there's it ages. It. I don't know. There's a lot of things with electronic music. Is that uh, it gets better very quickly? <laughs> well, I am yeah. back to say that seven minutes dead is now in the call. So say hi. Hello. Hello. Hi, Alex. Okay. Seven minutes dead. What's up, Seven Minutes Dead? Hello. How are Welcome. you? Welcome to the Good. stream. I've been watching from the shadows. Appar- <laughs> apparently, uh, Coven is is might be in here. Ooh. What? Or, I he just he just messaged on Facebook, uh, Max. He was just like locked in because I posted a link about the stream. Uh, he's he's one of my idols. I yeah. I, if he's if he's here, Coven, if you're in here, I fucking love your music. Why not get on Skype? We'll add it and make it a really gigantic party. Yeah, get get Coven in here. Shit. I oh wanna, my god. I want to. I want to fanboy I out on fanboy. Coven too. Let's both. Let's get a uh, <laughs> team fanboy. Yeah. Wh- while you guys fanboy, could you tell me who he is? Max Rowett. You don't know who Coven is? I also what? don't know who Coven is. I mean, I'm he sounds minor. great though. He sounds like a great guy. <laughs> He's probably. Seamless. You don't, best. Steven, You don't know who Coven is. You need if you're a sound design. Fanatic, you need to know who Coven is. He has some amazing sound design. Okay, well, and when we're done with the stream, you can educate me. Um, all right, well, I will. T- I will. His his wake you up EP is some of the best bass music you'll hear, in my opinion. Um, I, I, John, I, just shoot him my Skype complete. name and tell him. I don't. Him I don't. Skype. I don't have his. I don't have his. I just have his Facebook. Yeah, name. message him on Facebook. <laughs> okay, hold on. I'm gonna hit follow him, him on Twitter and check him out later. Okay. Hey, hey, uh, Feej. Yeah. How old are you? I am 18. Yeah, I just wow, started. jailbait. <sighs> wow. Oh, he see, turned 18. Something... No, I'm, I'm not I'm not jailbait. I'm yeah, right. he turned 18. He's legal now. See, here, here's, here's something interesting. Like, I'm I'm still not used to this. and I, I feel like it's a little bit weird. Is that, like, I'm not used to the fact that, like, people I interact with at, like, a professional level 
are so much younger than me than as they are. And I mean, you well, being eighteen is pretty like is is actually like older than usual. Because like, how how old is Nolan? Like, Nolan's like sixteen, I think. Yeah, sixteen or seventeen. Yeah, hey, how old um, are you, Stephen? I'm twenty five. Oh, when's your birthday? Uh, September. Happy birthday. Mm. Yeah. Happy birthday. Right now. Oh, I just dropped. I'm also 25. Yeah, but, don't. Uh, don't, don't ask. It's not until February. Oh yeah, god, so great. It's, it's just Ugh. it's weird. It, it wears me out. <laughs> I'll, I'll be fucking 30 hey, um, in July. Cool. Oh, wow. You are you are an old man. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be 23 in February. That's like a weird age. It's just like oh okay, 23. How oh, wait? How old are you, um, Brendan? I am 18. 18. At least you're not like 16. <laughs> oh, that- Or, or much older than me, or it's. You don't carry yourself like you're 18, though, Sean Toodle. If you don't mind me calling you Sean Toodle, <laughs> you carry yourself like you're to me in your early, maybe mid 20s. Well, that's a huge compliment, especially coming from you. Thank you. Uh, Steven, oh, yeah, Steven, no Steven, 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 no sound. Testing. Hello. Hi. Steven. My freaking my my interface crashed. Like that's never happened before. That happens yeah. to me all the time. There should be sound now. No, no, there is. Actually, there was sound. Like it, I turned the volume up and it was there. So yeah, the Skype because Skype came back before my mic did. No, 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 no. Oh well, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> I, Seamless live is how you call seamless oh yeah, I live. Have, I don't actually have the uh, thing open, do I? Yeah. Let's have let's have a call. Why not? We got a whole bunch of people. Is there already, already guy calling? So let's take him. Let's take him. Hello, J. C. <laughs> J. Pray for J. Hello. J. Hello. J. J. Hello. 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 Hi. What's up, dog? Hello. Hi. Hi, <laughs> Hi J. How you doing? Hi. Can you hear us? I don't think you can. Hello. Wait. Oh, wait. Hello. This is actually. Can can you hear us? Hello. Hey. <laughs> hey, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> you feeling pretty good there, buddy? <laughs> Hello. Jay. What's up? Not a lot. You got a question for us? Ask us a question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can hear us. No, I can hear you. You can? Yeah. Awesome. How baked are you, bro? Jay, what's the one thing you want to know more than anything in the world? (laughs) (laughs) Seamless, how do you do the harmer? Is uh, seamless is the harmer uh, necessary for the uh, for the dubstep? uh? (laughs) I I I too am. Thanks. Thank you. (laughs) I am. Thanks. Yes. Hold on. You got a you got a question, Senor Jay? Yeah. All right, all right. This is my question. Can you put me on auto tune first? You actually are on auto tune, but your voice is so low that it's not picking it up. Well, you uh, can change that actually. Too low for auto tune. Wow. I like well, that. Well, I'm not using. I'm not using actual auto tune. I'm using picture. Oh yeah, you can. Uh, do, I was, uh, oh, I can't. The delay is so far back. I wouldn't hear. So I wanted to. Oh damn, that would have been hilarious. All right. Well, I wondered why you. Because I've been using Fruity since, like, 03. I make rap beats, but I, I made, like, two dubstep. And um, I use 512. Uh, I use Lanier for playback. And I'm, and I'm wondering why you use 6-point. I mean, I think at one point they, they changed from... The default was at Lanier in, in an earlier version of Fruity Loops. And, I'm, and I noticed you have yours set even on rendering to 6-point. Hermite, and I, I'm not even sure about really what resampling is, but uh, okay. when I render, I, uh, I heard I've even heard that if you 
set the interpolation on playback uh, when you're just messing around. If you set it to a certain one, this could be like false, but you have to have it your interpolation set uh, the same as as if you're going to render. So if you're going to render at five twelve, you have to have the playback set. I don't know if this is true, but that's how I do it. And uh, I I render at five twelve and. And I heard some people. I heard you say in, in one of your things. I know this went past a whole bunch of people that uh, rendering in 32-bit float is like you know the probably the best thing you can do. And I briefly heard you talk about the Nyquist thing or whatever. You know, you're bringing it to a, a different DAW. You say you're going to do vocals on it or whatever. You you want to render at 32, and then when you're outputting it to SoundCloud or whatever. You, uh, SoundCloud won't take it though from 32, but you want to have it rendered from from whatever you record in or whatever you do to it to 16 bit. And, and I was just wondering, uh, what like what should I have everything set to in interpolation or whatever? Okay, all right. So here's <laughs> here's the deal with interpolation. Just to, to, to start, this is gonna be big. Um, <laughs> The inter- interpolation, the whole point that that is, that that thing exists, is to deal with um, re- resampling. And what, when we, what I mean by resampling is actually we are talking about it earlier um, with a sample, like, pitch, like li- literally a sample. And what I mean by that is like, au- like recorded audio. So if you have recorded audio and you pitch it and you're pitching it up and down or whatever, um, and you don't have resampling engaged, you run the risk of uh, having aliasing. And now the, the the Nyquist frequency is what I was talking about because if you have a recorded sample that has you know t- zero to twenty k hertz stuff going on, and then you pitch it up, and then that means that some part of the audio is going to go above twenty k. It's going to go above. Well, I don't know. If, well, it's going to it's going to go above the, the Nyquist frequency. And so if you don't have resampling engaged, instead of you know going above the frequency, it can't actually do that. So it wraps around and comes back lower. And uh, this creates a very unique and weird sound. It's kind of bad if you're not doing it on purpose. And so then resampling gets rid of that. And like any level of resampling above linear. So linear, linear is it's just doing it. It's not resampling. And then if you do six point, it's doing resampling. And then all the way to 512, it does it really, really well. Um, so if you're, so this, this, this problem comes up when people have different settings in their in their pl- uh, live playback and their rendering where they don't have resampling engaged in, in um, playback and then they render it and then their song sounds different because they had worked on their project with aliasing happening and they like processed it and they EQ'd it and mastered it with that and then they rendered it and then it's just gone. And so like huge portions of what they had created that created the ca- character of the song are not going to be there anymore. So um, it's important to have resampling on on both but really above six point it's not super duper noticeable in terms of quality difference um so if you have if you have six uh, as well if you have a higher setting it uses more cpu so if it if that gets to be an issue then that's something that you can you know get rid of but um that's what that's what the deal with the resampling does that's what it's for um now the 32 bit thing the 32 bit um I made a video about this on some of my channel, youtube.com slash sigmasar. And what really what 32 bit is, is that it basically removes the headroom uh, limiting requirement or feature of 24 uh, bit and 16 bit. So this means that no matter what you do, it's not going to clip. I mean, it will, but you have to have, you have to be like, it's plus 1600 dB. That's how high you have to go to clip it. And that's like, thousands of times more than what normal like 24-bit audio and 16-bit audio does so it, it should not be a consideration unless you're making like the worst mixing decisions possible or doing it on purpose um so this so this means that when you when you save it as that it's never going to clip and it means you always have your data so when you go to bring it to mastering your peaks are still there and you can turn it down and you can bring it back below zero db and it's, it'll still it'll still be there be fine but if you write it at 24 bit at that previous level, you clip it, you turn it down, and it's still clipped. It's just quieter, and it's not good. Um, however, depending on the DAW, 
not all DAWs actually work with 32-bit audio, at least not the audio that comes out of FL. I know, for example, Logic on a Mac, um, at least not, it didn't used to work because I actually rented out a whole bunch of 32-bit WAV files for a person and he was like, these, these don't work. They don't do anything. So that's how I, I encountered that problem. But uh, Headroom is really all about what 32-bit is. Nice. All right, I got one more, and then uh, I, I talked to this one guy, and he does like techno type rap beats, and he, I, I could never. His stuff sounds maximized, like his it sounds mastered and all that, and he said the best way to is to not have anything on on the master channel. He's like, I use no, I don't use fruity limiter, I don't use maximus, and he's like, I just put fruity limiters on each channel, and and maybe a little EQ if. If anything, he's like, or like a high pass or something on the synth and, you know, EQ the 808 or whatever. And he does not use, Mac. it sounds like all Maximus or, or Fruity Limiter. And I was just wondering what you think of, about just channel, uh, just insert effects and nothing mm. on the master channel, if you ever tried that. Well, um, that, that sounds... An- awful lot like a pre-master and if he if like a person is able to mix it and make it mix it the web together so well and make it sound like you know a fully you know over compressed master and that guy's really good at mixing because uh like if you like at first your logic might be to think that if you put a limiter on all the individual channels that means nothing's going above zero db and that would mean nothing goes above zero db but that's not actually what happens because the audio adds together and that will so if you have two sources together that are both zero db they're both going to go above zero db when they go to the master so that means that you'll still have to turn stuff down and still have to mix stuff and that's where the eqing comes in and like that's basically it's a, a variation on like the traditional method of, of mixing and mastering which is to say that you like you keep it below you know minus six or whatever you keep, and you, you mix it all so that it stays like a certain frequency stay below where they are because that's basically what compression does, especially multiband compression, is that it alters the lo- the level of volume for peaks when things come by on certain bands, so that it stays below zero dB. And you're basically doing that yourself when you do EQing, only it's not dynamic; it's just static. And some of the best mixes in history were done like that. And the, although they usually also had some kind of like master effects and compression or whatever, but if you feel like you want to have a super extra challenge. Then you can have the whole no master effects route. All right, uh, one more before I go. I know I said one more. All right, uh, <laughs> one of my other dudes that does, you know, screw what he does. He does, you know, new grounds beats, whatever. All right, he he sends he uses the send channels.
assume that other people are, are taking care of it than everyone will. Okay, hold so, on. We're, we're back. We're back. Oh, oh fuck's sake. Welcome back. Darn it. Oh, wow. How long were you guys out? a good part of the story. I was telling a story while you are gone about how I drove past a truck <laughs> that was on fire, and I had to call 911. And it was the first time I ever called 911. I had I have yet to actually ever personally call 911. Yeah, it was on my bucket list. You and try it. I, I'm sorry for that person's truck to be on fire, but I'm also I've I've now experienced it. Like I've been I've around with like where my truck. parents have called 911, but like I have never actually personally had to call 911. It's fucking hilarious that we've just been like segregated in our own little call over here with no audio from you whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> so we just randomly started telling fucking stories. <laughs> Tonight has been like the worst technical failure ever. I think today's just been like one of the most disastrous days ever in the history of my life. Really? Wow. I've so been many having things. a pretty good day. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm still having a great day. Just like all these things keep going wrong. So what, so what you're saying is that we're blaming you for our problems. That's yes, good. We need somebody to blame. I'm all right. the omen in the room. I'm actually kind of afraid to take another caller. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing, but it's like I told you earlier. If it's not fucking broke, don't break it. And you continuously break it. I haven't been breaking anything. This guy's named Steven, so I'm answering it. Oh fuck. <laughs> Hello, That's Steven. Uh, hey, uh, how's it going? It's going good. How's Hi, life? Steven. Wait, is everyone here named Steven? Not wait. Where's the caller named Steve? The caller's name sorry, is Steven. Hey, Steve. Sorry, I came off. Sorry. All right, uh, I've got a question. All right. Um. All right, so I'm from the UK, and uh, the way music is taught in schools isn't isn't great here. Um, I really didn't like music at school; I actually hated it. But now I've sort of left school, I've gone to university, sort of like a bit of a hobby. So I was just wondering what it's like if if there's anything you would change about the way that music is taught in schools. Um, mm. Fiege has hast thou an answer? Uh, uh, yeah, um, I would make uh, music less performance based and more creation based uh, i think we sit here and it, in school they teach you just how to play things and not really understand it and i really think that they need to focus on you know having you compose and uh, you know make your own your own stuff at, at even a rudimentary level okay um i'm oh, sorry to aid that like if i wanted to alter the curriculum a little bit um I would, I would put, especially nowadays, I would definitely put like, like a, a sound design class as like part of that, in a big way. But beyond that, like even just the sort of even broader terms, like for just for theory, like before you before you even like after you get like the most basic and like theory and like knowing what the notes are named and like what scale degrees are, I think that like ear training should be what you do for like a long ass time, because. Almost everything that you you'll ever get out of a music theory class, ear training will be the most useful thing you ever do ever, because you'll be able to learn, like by listening to something, what's happening, and you'll be able to translate like things you hear in your head, like I was talking about earlier. Like that's that's like the most key way of being able to do that, and that's 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 what has that. Um, that's another question. Uh... Now, maybe that like you've started doing music professionally, has it become a, has it, how has your attitude towards it changed? Much more stressed. Stressed. I hate music. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's got, yeah, it, it definitely ruins it a bit, but at the same time, I am not planning on doing it uh, for my career. So it, it, that kind of, I, st I can still have fun. I, I don't have to worry about things as much, but I also... It's also, there's still a lot of business aspects in it that I'm sure irk us all. Um, I kind of... Brendan, I, if you, if, if you um, aren't going to do uh, music with your career, what do you plan on doing? Uh, I'm going, uh, to be honest, I, I can't get that this specific, but I know next year I'll be going to uh, university to study neuroscience. Oh, okay. And Oh yeah, and, lover of science and shenanigans. Yeah, I, I do love I do love me some science, um, especially <laughs> biology and psychology, and I, actually I, I like it all to be honest. It, so that's what I I want to do with my life. Yeah, um, it's kind of like 
when you play a video game or like a game and you get really serious about it and like you're like really like you're focused on like winning and then all your friends tell you man it's just a game lay up like stop being so serious about it like when you start doing music professionally you're that guy that's that serious about the game you become like making the next banger and like winning and all that whatever is like is now suddenly life and death to you only except for being that guy playing the game for you it's not actually a game anymore it's like literally not a game it's kind of like it's kind of like that that's how that feels for me i like it i like it a lot Oh. Oh yes. Yeah, so, um. Seven minutes Bless said. You. I. I just heard your. Mu- I just heard your music, and it's fucking sweet. You heard it? Yeah. I Thank just you. Listen- I just. Li- that's why I was quiet because I was just listening to some tunes. Oh, and- what'd you listen to? I-, I heard your um Studio Killers remix, which is mm-hmm. which which is you have some very very clean like t- uh, tasty percussion or um production. I meant to say. I mean percussion too, but the pr- whole thing like it just it just all sounds very. It's just. It all sounds very clean, very extremely well mixed, and the melodic, your melodies sound awesome. His melodies so, are quite are quite nice. I I, I, I mean, I've honestly I only I just kind of like I hate doing it, but I kind of just skim through some stuff. I'm gonna actually like listen to it later, but from what it sounds like, it sounds fucking awesome. Thanks. Yeah, uh, that that remix came out a lot better than. Um, my other stuff that I usually do, like everything up before now, I always have a really, really hard time balancing everything out because I always have a hundred plus channels going on and five or six sand channels with distortion and stuff like that. Um, what do you use to produce? Ableton. Ableton. It, I could kind of, yeah, I could kind of hear the Ableton sound in it. Can you? <laughs> yeah. No, I, I don't. Hear, I don't know I, what that is, but do you use any? Well, do you use any other um, DAWs? No, I started out on FL Studio, and then I moved to Reason after a year or so, and yeah. then uh, ended up settling on Ableton. So, yeah, I used I used Ableton for two years, and um, I switched over to Logic because I became really good friends with A5, and he was like, you know, we we were we were like, why do your mixes sound so good? Like, what are you doing that we're not doing? Cause we were, <laughs> we were on Ableton Eight, and it's actually a fact that Ableton Eight sounds like shit because. It has this weird, like, invisible. It actually has a weird invisible compressor on the master that yep. compresses the highs, and you can hear yep. it too. Like, Didn't they improve it with Ableton Nine? Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm using now. Live Nine sounds, yeah. They they definitely improved it so much more. And um, like I could tell when I went from I used Ableton for two years, and I switched over to Logic, and I've been using it this past year. And there has been, I see, I just noticed instantly my mixes felt so much more free. Like it felt more open, like there's more three D dynamic space to it, and it's like you don't even really have to do much, you know. I mean, there's still like a lot of like mixing that you have to do, or else it'll just sound, you know, not mixed well. Right, but, but it doesn't um, interfere with you. Yeah. So it, but I've noticed in Logic and yeah, Ableton. I mean, Live Nine still sounds really good. It sounds really good, but it still has like this like distinct. Ableton just sounds more organic to me. Organic. Anyway, organic, uh, organic. Steve, Steven, thank you for your call. Thanks, awesome. Steven. Cheers, thanks. thanks, Steve. Bye. All right, uh, let's have some let's have some uh, some chat questions. I um, hate you, Ultra Steven. Ultra Torqued asked like invisible. How does he use it? And that's probably a joke, but I just want to clarify what we're talking about is that Ableton Eight, and to some extent maybe Nine. I don't really know, but um, Eight had a uh, like it actually has pre-mixing happening on the master that you can't control like yeah it has a compressor on the highs like he just said probably some eq or whatever and that means that it's going to make your stuff sound different like just on the base master bare empty everything than if it were in any other DAW. and it's deceptive as fuck and i hate that i hate that so hard because like noobs and people will do tests or something and like play one thing and one th- one thing or another and be like, why does my track sound like this in FL and like this in Ableton and, and or Logic? And like they'll they'll not they'll, they won't make the like the they won't make the sort of intuitive leap that, oh, Ableton's screwing on my track. They'll think that, oh, Ableton has like a better sound engine or something else has a better sound engine. And like Ah, it just it's just it's such misinformation that I just I can't. 
I'd say. FL Studio sounds very similar to um, Logic, in my opinion. Um, it's not, it has it has that same like dynamic uh, 3D space because I've heard you know mixes like you know from from you, Stephen, and, and you, um, Brendan, and artists like Haywire and you know Savant who get some really clean mixes out of it out of FL Studio and yeah. I I I I, I dig the sound of FL. For uh, sure. Seamless. Uh -huh. Someone else someone has said that FL has a hidden compressor and I'm I can I can tell you that it does that, not. That's not true. Um Fiji, what is cake out of ten? I I don't think that's a real question. <laughs> okay. Just as long as we I thought that was some kind of like code. Or some in joke. Um, what is cake out of ten? Uh, if I had I a witty answer, I would reply with one, but I do not. I'm sorry. All right. What's everyone's can you monitors? give like a measurement in something we can understand, like bananas? How many bananas is that? <laughs> yeah, banana for scale, guys. Come on. Um, so yeah, what what monitors is everyone using? I'm using KRK ST8s. They're passives. I don't have monitors. I'm using uh, headphones. Unfortunately or fortunately, I don't know. It's working so far. Circular I'm using Sennheiser on. HD 595s. And when I can't hear this sub, I put a low pass on the master and put the gain of about 8 or 9 dB. And then I can just listen to the subs and then adjust my kick and sub accordingly. And it works. There it's working. Go. There you go. Uh, my, my ST8s are hooked up to a, a really terrible amp. Like, actually, it's not a bad amp. It's, I, I should not say it was terrible. I feel bad. Sorry, amp. You're not terrible. <laughs> it's just a little bit busted. So much so that I can't ever turn it off because it might not turn back on again. So oh, no. It's been what running for like a month. What happens if the power goes out? <laughs> actually, it was funny is that I did actually have to tear the power, turn the power off in the house to go fix a, fix a light fixture. And I was like, shit, my amp. And <laughs> I turned the power back on and it came back on. And I was like, yeah, praise God. Damn. Oh my God. <laughs> I had a religious experience. My amp turned back on. It came back from the dead. It's a miracle. That's awesome. All right. So someone said something that involved Fiji and something else, but it didn't end in the question mark, so I'm not going to read it. Um, uh, if the genre you like to produce didn't exist, what genre would you produce, if any? Also, how would music in your taste be different if you didn't produce music? Um, well, if the, <laughs> oh, if the genre I produced it didn't exist, I would invent a genre. That's what would happen, because I'd still be making Wait, it. Wait, in this, in this alternate universe, do we still have the knowledge of music that we have now? Probably not. Because if so, then probably that, not, then. That music I don't, knowledge would have come doesn't, from... doesn't there. really apply, like... It reminds me of a quote from... That's a weird <laughs> question. Like, what... what yeah. bearing it reminds me of a quote from... The Matrix of all movies, where Morpheus says, uh, "What happened happened, and couldn't have happened any other way." Because really, if you know certain genres didn't exist, then that would mean that whatever had previously happened to lead to those genres existing in the first place may have ultimately affected other things that would ultimately affect you as a person, or even things that might result in your very birth. So maybe yeah, if those genres didn't to... exist, you wouldn't exist. Yep, this is what's referred to as the butterfly effect, which is yeah. in fact not just a terrible movie. It's a phenomenon that is a real thing. It was just described right then. Wait, yeah. someone said, oh, do, all, do all of your streamers hate Zomboy? <laughs> <laughs> that, might, that might be my fault because I trash-talked him from day one. You did. It's a thing you did, Sean. I mean, yeah, he's, he's not the best, but he's I will say his, his latest music, I don't... I don't hate. I don't hate his latest music, and I think his Get latest up. music is it's probably his best stuff. Everything before that was pretty rip shitty. Off. Well, I mean, he is he is a rip, he is a complete fraud. Like he isn't actually a real like. He he just he samples vengeance packs. That's not that's not even half of it, bro. Mm -hmm. it's, actually, I think it's about half of it. <clears throat> no. Does he does he actually make any of his own sounds? I doubt it. But, but I don't see anything wrong with using vengeance sample packs. I mean, that's what they're there for. But, okay, no. I mean, they, using a vengeance sample pack is fine, but when you start fucking cutting up people's songs and putting the samples for the, you're cutting out of people's songs in your music and then pretending that you're awesome and you made it, 
that's whenever you just that yeah, last it's the, part. It's the pretending you made it hard. It that yeah, is a problem. I mean, I he mean, did if a, you're just up front and honest about it. Then yeah, no problem. But. Well, he did it in a studio interview once, and like people thought he was going to like show them how he does shit, but really he couldn't show you anything because he doesn't do shit. Ah, so it was, just, it was just a lot of him standing there saying, this is where I do this, and this is where I do this. I hate those interviews. It's not, not, just, it's not just limited to him either. <laughs> like whenever, whenever they have a studio interview with like an artist, especially an artist that's known for having really awesome sound design or like really complicated production value of any kind, not even just sound design, and they talk about the most bland, basic, all known shit. Just like the least informative interview you could have possibly done. <laughs> with the person whose value well, is just so much greater. the level you're at. It's all relative. It's, it's for real, someone it's like relative. you, who's very knowledgeable and, and most verses of the electronic music world, you, there's not much you're going to get out of that. But I think those are more for the, the little guy, like looking up to him, like, oh, I want to I wanna be Noisia one, one day. And when you're not Noisia, you're seamless. Well, it's, yeah, yeah. that's the thing, though, is that when Noisia had their future, future music interview, they actually fucking got into some stuff, like they. Yeah, they, uh, that was terrible. Yeah, you're right. And <laughs> like, but then like Rob Swire had his future music interview, and it was like, yeah, yeah, I recorded some drums. It could be they're just not, you I know, put it in the track. At, just not good at interviews. Um, or maybe I mean, they just yeah, don't know how to explain it, other than when they're in the doll in the moment, then they could show it, but they don't know how to. He, that that pull. particular interview, he actually was in, in his like a project for something, and it was funny. Like Pendulum, you know, when you when you think of Pendulum, you think of that that one video where that guy layered fourteen of their tracks, and they were like the same beat. Which is whatever, drum and bass, that's fine. But when he was talking about like producing the drums for some, some track, and they have like for their live, when they were doing live, the drummer that they had in band, he's like a really good drummer. And he's a really good, specifically jungle drum and bass drummer. Like JoJo Mayer level, really fucking good. And he's doing pendulum stuff. And like on one album, they're like, oh, we recorded him in the studio doing beats and whatever and then like i can't hear any of that in in the actual in the actual tracks because it's the same do da, do da, do da, do da. So that that happens with a lot of drum and bass people is they tend to stick to one drum beat most of the time i mean literally if you listen to a lot of drum and bass it's all the same shit but you can't complain because it's kind of like saying the same about house music yeah Fucking i mean all I guess 128 I guess is being, pretty much the same 128 drums i guess i'm just being a little elitist about it but like eh. i mean there's a little variation but there's not going to be a lot yeah K- K- kj sauka i don't know how to say his name kj that guy the guy in the chat he knows what I'm talking about he's like he had a it's just, it's just weird it's like it's and I, I brought up jojo mayor because um he's he's like the patron saint of jungle drummers but he like i'd be like taking him to a studio and having him play a metallica song i was like okay that's adequate usage of that man's talents. This question gets asked <laughs> everywhere, even on my stream. Somebody always says, how do you do your collabs? And they're asking uh, Fiji, but, I mean, it's a simple Go answer. You just, you just do them. You, uh, it depends. Um, I mean, if you're doing a collab in person, you just, you know, you go. The way when I did my collab with uh, Direct, we had uh, our two laptops set up, and then we were both connected to the same audio interface and then we had the mixer set up so we could just uh you know turn the knob back and forth to hear what each other were working on and then we had a dropbox set up so we could just you know send each other over so i mean that's that's only possible if you're sitting right next to each other yeah exactly yeah. but same with fist bumps typically happens fist bumps. <laughs> yes same with fist bumps <laughs> but you just you guys send each other either a project file if you're on the same daw or a um you just bust out stems. I think when Seamus and I did that remix, we were kind of messy because we didn't we didn't really exchange project files too much. It was mostly just us both both blaring music over fucking Skype for like twelve yeah. straight hours. <laughs> well, and Sean, it's funny because like Sean's contribution was mostly super cutting, ultra glitch making, which necessitated that he rendered that out as a stem. 
even though we were both using FL. I sent him the project. Like, like he he made some edits on the second drop, and like I could because I sent him the project, and it worked. Like we could do that. We had all the right plugins and all the correct samples, and the, all the stems from the remix. But then like when he actually did his part, like it was so audio intensive that it didn't matter because it had to have been a stem. So like we were we were in the perfect environment, but we still had to use stems. Yeah, we still had to render out to audio and send it back and forth. I mean, yeah, we're, we're like doing it, it just it was a pain in the stems. ass. I fucking hated every minute of it. You did a good job though. Yeah, and Is then it, you post shit like fun times were had on the description instead of instead of like you know shamelessly promoting ourselves with man, like links. Man, you put I asked fun you, times were had. I, I, we, I was talking to you while I wrote that, and I said, "What should I put in here?" And you're like, "I don't know, whatever." Uh, I mean, later I regretted not putting in like links to shit, but like, you were no help. <laughs> what kind of help could I have been? I was just like, they'll be, I was they'll be done. blaming blaming me. That. I was so happy when it was over. I was just like, okay, it's done. Good. Hey, hey, fellas. I'm about to head out. That's fine. We're actually about done here anyway. It's 730. Okay. This has cool. been this has been Seamless Live 16, I think. And it was originally featuring Mr. Fiji Ouija, but now it's featuring Fiji Ouija, Prismatic, Sean Law, and... Uh, seven, seven Minutes dead. dead. Seven Minutes Dead. His name is Alex. Yeah, that guy. He's a cool dude. You're a nice dude. And me. I'm Seamless. Hi. He I'm makes, he makes uh, sick wubs. He All makes pretty, pretty uh, interesting webs. Very interesting. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop recording. For people watch on YouTube. Oh, before I leave, see, um, Stephen, what? you go check out, um, go on Coven SoundCloud, K O V E N, and check out um, his Wake You Up EP. Check out the song um, Wake You Up. Check out the song Whoopi's Back in the Habit. Check that song out first. Whoopi's Back in the Habit, because you're gonna you're gonna cry. Okay. I look forward to you're crying. Actually, you're actually going to cry. I'm not okay. joking. All right. I'm, I'm stopping recording now. If you're watching this okay. on YouTube, uh, the stream happens every week on Saturdays, usually, if I'm, you know, not failing hard. And um, at Justin TV, Justin.tv slash seamless. All right. I always screw that up. And uh, it begins at 6 p.m. EST, which is minus 5 GMT. And my channel. So, yes. Now. If you have any questions about this, let me know. And as usual, have a nice day.